Hi, once again, all you weather geeks, weather enthusiasts, weather weenies. It's the Tuesday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks here on the 27th day of June in 2017. Uh, hard to believe we are almost halfway through the year. July 1st is Saturday. And uh, as we hit the halfway mark of 2017 and start a new month, we'll, we'll do some reviews of of the first half of the year and the month of June later this week, and we'll do a July forecast as well. You can look for that. Coming up here in a few days, a quick review of our forecasts here in the month of June. We call this the two degree guarantee. And what we mean by that is we try to get the next day's high right within two degrees. Uh, and uh, we've had seven, I think seven, seven misses so far this month, 20 hits. And a hit uh, includes today. Uh, our high today was 68, our forecast was 69 degrees. For 2017, our uh, accuracy rate here is at 70%. I expect that number to uh, climb as we get into the heart of summer. And typically in the middle of our winter season and our summer seasons, that's when forecasting, at least in terms of temperatures, tends to be a little bit less challenging because there's not as many big changes when you're in the heart of the cold season or the uh, warm season. So uh, today's high of 68, of course, way, way below the average of 80 on this date. We hit 81 on the first day of July, and 82 is our high water mark for the year. Uh, by the way, 68, that's, a, that's a, an average high temperature that's more typical of very late September, like around the 27th of September. Uh, that's, that's where uh, we have an average high of 68 degrees. So, of course, today, a little hit to fall in the air. We did not have any rain in a lot of spots today. A couple of showers this morning uh, from roughly I-80 on North and Trumbull County, parts of Mercer County. Uh, showed a similar graphic last evening, but here's a look at a comparison for May and June of last year and this year. This year, this period has been quite a bit wetter. Uh, things are a lot greener and more lush than they were late in the spring and early in the summer season back in 2016. Now, it ended up being a pretty wet summer last year, but most of that was in July and August. June was not very wet at all. Our uh, weather map this evening at uh, 7.15 p.m. shows high pressure. That's that circular area right over Ohio and, uh, and parts of uh, Kentucky, West Virginia, Western PA. That's, uh, that's a bubble of high pressure that's almost right overhead. And our cumulus field continuing to dissipate this evening. We'll have a clear sky, very comfortable temperatures for later on tonight. Big picture for tomorrow. Notice our forecast high tomorrow is more seasonable. 78 degrees, our average high tomorrow, 80, 81. So we'll be much closer to that. Tomorrow's records are 44 and 97. Notice that 44 was in 1988. You may remember that was an exceptionally hot summer in 1988. The air was so dry that summer that we had a, we had a lot of hot days, but the nights were actually very cool during that hot spell. We, there were several record lows in that hot summer of 1988. The air was dry enough that temperatures were able to fall at night. When you don't have a muggy air mass, like tonight, uh, temperatures can fall. So with a dry air mass tonight, we'll also be on the cool side. Down to about 50 tonight. That high slips off to the east tomorrow. Beautiful day tomorrow. I think there'll be some high, thin, cirrus clouds for the afternoon, but no big deal there. Great day to get outdoors tomorrow. Here's a look at Thursday, though. Now we're firmly in the soup here on Thursday. Back to the muggy air. Dew points will rise through the 60s. This weak front approaching. I think there will be a couple of thunderstorms around, especially after 1 or 2 in the afternoon on Thursday. And that threat for wet weather will continue into Friday because this front's going to hit the brakes. Now, it's a weak boundary, but it's a boundary nonetheless. It'll be a focusing mechanism for shower and thunderstorm development on Friday. Don't think Thursday or Friday are rainy days. Not going to rain all day, but uh, there will be that threat for some showers and storms. Uh, the uh, Storm Prediction Center does have uh, parts of the region outlined in a what we call a slate risk on Thursday. That's the yellow area. That's a category that's kind of towards the middle of the scale here. Generally, when we're talking about a slate risk, we're, you know, in general, uh, talking about scattered severe storms, a possibility they would typically be fairly short-lived, not necessarily all that widespread. Do think the highest risk for severe weather Thursday is probably in northwest Ohio, into parts of northern Ohio. It's a little lower once you're into the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys, but still we want to keep our guard up for Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Any of these storms could get a little bit, uh, a little bit rowdy, certainly enough uh, juice in the atmosphere. Uh, let's uh, start talking a little bit about the upcoming weekend. Let's uh, jump over here. And the the weekend, I think, is going to be overall not bad at all. Uh, again, Friday unsettled at times, even though those thunderstorms could be kind of few and far between, depending on where that boundary sets up. Uh, the GFS here suggests that that boundary is actually a little bit farther north 
on uh, Friday. Now, if this is right, if the boundary kind of settles more like this, there won't be that many thunderstorms around on Friday. Now, if, if the boundary is more in here, then yeah, it'll be a fairly active day. But whatever happens on Friday, I think Saturday can be active for a while, but I don't think it's the whole day. We've got another weak front that's going to push through. It's a little bit stronger than the Thursday-Friday boundary. And uh, let me back up here to Saturday. The timing on this is still in question. There's some model uh, disagreement, but uh, here's the GFS suggesting the front is right here, right around lunchtime or so. If this speed is to be believed, we'll have to keep the threat for wet weather into at least early to mid-afternoon on Saturday. Some of the other modeling's faster. If the faster ideas are right, then rain chances may go down to nil by midday. It may be actually be a pretty nice afternoon. If the front is a little faster, the dew points will start to drop, and it'll turn out to be a, a nice day. So we're, we're rooting for a faster front if you have outdoor plans on Saturday. On Sunday, I think it's going to be beautiful. Uh, high pressure builds in, and this will be a day where the dew points drop. They may not drop for very long. It's going to turn pretty muggy, I think, for parts of next week. But Sunday, I think, will be a very nice weekend summer day. What about after that? Uh, here's a look at the uh, overall pattern. We're showing uh, temperature anomalies, differences from average. The blues and greens, of course, are cool. Oranges and reds are warm. This is the European modeling showing around the 4th of July, kind of a ho-hum temperature look for our region. I think the 4th is likely to be a fairly seasonable day. Uh, upper 70s, lower 80s, seeming likely right now. Now, what about the chance for rain? Eh, a week out. We can't do much better than saying there's a chance. That's, that's what you're going to get a week out. There's a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms on the 4th, but make sure you're checking the forecast very frequently as we get closer to the holiday because we'll be able to really hone in on it. But a week out in the summer... A chance for a shower and thunderstorm is all the skill we have a week out as far as details. After the 4th, I do think it looks pretty warm. Now, not super crazy hot. I don't see a lot of 90s in this pattern. But late next week, a lot of widespread warmth across the Great Lakes and New England overall. Hey, it looks like summer. Nothing unusual for the first couple of weeks of July. That's tonight's weather for Weather Geeks. I'll have a full update tonight on 21 News at 11. Make sure you're following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On Twitter and Instagram, I'm Eric WFMJ. I'll see you back here tomorrow evening.